Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my preview of Chelsea versus Liverpool this Saturday's game in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge. It's the second instalment of the two games between the Reds and the Blues. Uh, they obviously got the better of us at Anfield last night. Uh, Eden Hazard scoring that winning goal after Sturridge put us in front. Uh, Emerson got that slightly, you know, controversial equaliser and then Hazard just kind of ran rings around our entire defence and blasted one in. And Chelsea took home the spoils and it's a frustrating one because, you know, trophies at the end of the day is the thing that we've been lacking over the past, well, half a decade or more. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's the one thing Jurgen Klopp is essentially going to be judged on. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the League Cup versus the likes of the Premier League, the Champions League, is no comparison. So it's frustrating, but if you're going to go out of a competition, if you're going to lose a game uh, out of this stretch between international break, uh, in September and the one in October, then this is the one you want to lose, um, unfortunately, unless you want to lose one of the Champions League games. So, uh, the Premier League's the bread and butter. The Premier League is the competition in which we play Chelsea at Stamford Bridge on Saturday tea time. We are the favourites with the bookmakers, um, which I do find interesting. We were the favourites at Spurs away as well. Um, now, the odds for Chelsea versus Liverpool, Chelsea were quite... Uh, rank outside, uh, today I looked and you could get 19 to 10, they're into 7 to 4 now on Skybet, uh, Liverpool 7 to 5, so there's not much in it, but Liverpool slightly favoured, uh, obviously our away record this season has been bang on, um, and you know we're not conceding many goals when we've got our first choice defence in there, Chelsea drew at West Ham to their perfect record is gone, maybe if they'd gone there and won 3 or 4 nil, they'd have been slight favourites, uh, they'd have been top of the league and uh, raring to go, but uh, as it is, they have got momentum, have, you know, courtesy of that win at Anfield, even though the stronger sides weren't out, we still did introduce Firmino, Salah and you know, Mane started the game, Milner played, so you know, it's not like it was a bunch of youngsters out there, it was a strong Liverpool side, just obviously uh, made up mainly of fringe players, but the fringe players on the whole was our team two seasons ago, so you know, we, cannot, we cannot point too many fingers, um, and yeah, we, we were beaten on the night. It's obviously going to be a huge different game. I think the systems will be very similar. I think it will still be 4-3-3 versus 4-3-3. Um, I think it, you know, it's nailed on what our team selection is going to be. We saw James Milner hooked on after 60 minutes. Um, I think there's no chance he doesn't start. Wijnaldum didn't even play a single minute. I think there's no chance he doesn't start. Jordan Henderson came off the bench. Um, I think there's no chance he doesn't start. I think that is your, your three. Um, Naby, Naby Keita uh, got plenty of minutes the other night, so I'd be surprised if he played at Sanford Bridge. Um, so, yeah, interesting. The front three is the front three. They'll play and the back five. I think we're all very appreciative of Alisson, Trent, Gomez, Van Dijk and Robertson, who will be the back five on Saturday. Uh, now, I mean, you know, it's not a, with the exception of Allison and uh, Van Dyke, the other three players. It's not a, it's not a, you know, reputable in terms of transfer fee and rep experience. It's it's y two young players in Trent and Gomez and Andy Robertson from Hull. But you already look at that defence and think, Jesus Christ, that is a formidable defence. Um, and it's it's you know it's a it's a mighty relief that we're going to have them. Uh, back again on Saturday. Now Chelsea will make changes too. Uh, they have Kepa back in goal. Aspilicueta did play midweek, but I imagine he'll soon be joined um, by David Luiz, who did come on uh, the other night, and Cahill in Rudiger's absence. Marcos Alonso, I imagine, will play left back. Then you've got the N'Golo Kante will start the game for them. Jorginho as well, and Matteo Kovacic, who was quite bright for them uh, in the League Cup tie. And then up, you know, in that front three, you've got Eden Hazard. You've got Willian probably, uh, and then you know you'd imagine Olivier Giroud, given that Morata got the nod midweek. You'd, you'd probably think Giroud has been getting um, most of the starts in the league. So um, you know, if you if you match them up man for man, there's not much in it. Tactically, it'd be very very interesting to see how Chelsea approach this. I think Liverpool, Liverpool's desires will be very similar to what it was at Spurs away. You know, we started fast, but then we were happy to absorb the, the pressure for a little bit. Um, Spurs had a lot of the ball in that first half at Wembley, uh, but we never really looked in any real danger. Yes, I know we conceded a couple of chances in the second half. Lucas Moura going close and Lamella eventually scoring from a set piece. But, um, you know, I just think our firepower will, will, will feel that if we can get them on the break, um, then things can happen for us. It didn't happen for us last season at Stamford Bridge. We were there in May, so it doesn't feel like that long ago at all. Um, just four months ago. Uh, and Champions League football was riding on it. It was, a, it was an important game, even though we had other commitments in the Champions League. It was still a big game at the bridge. We just couldn't quite carve anything out. I know Mo Salah got done for diving, I recall. Had one or two half chances, but it was a... You know, it was a Giroud header in the end, wasn't it, that won the game for Chelsea. And, you know, outside of that, there wasn't much else to report. It was quite a, a dull affair. That was, of course, under Antonio Conte for Chelsea. Um, you know, we didn't have 
uh, Allison in goal. You know, there's various things in, in our team that weren't perfect then, but now you'd say we're pretty much as good as it gets. The first 11 is pretty set at the moment. I know there'll be arguments over Keita. Um, there'll still be arguments over Fabinho. I'd love to get your thoughts on what you thought about his performance in midweek. I thought he was pretty sluggish, to be honest, especially in the first half. I thought he grew into it. I thought it was a 6.5 out of 10 performance, just not quite up to the speed of the English football yet, um, but showed signs of good, uh, you know, good spatial awareness, good positioning, and you know, always, always showing for the ball, just not necessarily quick enough to get it moving again, um, which he will have to be. And Jordan Henderson's got much much better at that as time's gone on. Emery Chan suffered from it, to be honest with you. Um, but I'd say the best person uh, at the club for that at the moment is Junior Bynaldum. Um, you know, would you like to see him in that number six role? I think he would be excellent there if he did, you know, stopping those runs coming from deep from the likes of Kovacic um, and N'Golo Kante, who do come from deep. Kovacic, we saw it uh, at Anfield the other night. He was making those runs constantly. We saw it at Drinkwater at Anfield last season. Chelsea, when they do play, um, with that 4-3-3. They're not afraid for two of those midfielders to bomb on quite far because they've got that security. Last season, that security was Kante. Now, you know, it appears to be Jorginho and Kante's been given that licence to run forward and he is quick. You know, he does get into good positions. He's maybe not the player with the most finesse in the Premier League, but he does get into dangerous positions. So how are we going to track those runners um, you know, away from home, they're going to be attacking us, you, you, you'd expect. Um, you know, they're not going to be committing too many men forward because they know the danger that we possess, especially on the flanks. Um, I'll also be interested to see whether we go with Firmino on the left, um, you know, maybe Salah central, or whether we put Salah on Marcos Alonso, who I think defensively is not quite all there. Um, Sadio Mane on Aspilicueta is an interesting one, or we'll maybe... You know, Aspilicueta has proved he can deal with pace, but can he deal with someone as clever as Firmino who's going to drop a bit deeper and create that space in behind? Like, so David Luiz, who, you know, again, quality on the ball, uh, great footballer. Is he a smart enough defender to deal with Mo Salah's runs? So I'll be very interested to see how we do, you know, and Gary Cahill as well, you know, not the quickest. So I'll be very interested to see how we can target that Chelsea defence. And as strong as that defence has been for the last five or six seasons, um, in, in, in spells at least, um, I would say that I trust our defence right now over theirs. And that might be a surprise given the lack of experience in our defence and, and the trophies and the, you know, the combined cost of them, their defence um, and the threat that Alonso poses from set pieces. Um, and not even just from set pieces, even from open play, he gets himself right into that penalty area and he's got a lovely left foot. Um, but the same can be said for Andy Robertson. So if you've got any thoughts on the starting lineup, let me know because I think it is pretty nailed on. As far as the results concerned, as I said, we are slight favourites with the bookies. I said before Spurs, I'd take a draw. I said before Spurs, I would take a draw at uh, Wembley. We went 1-0 up in the first half, um, soon made it 2 uh, just just after the restart, uh, and then it was pretty plain sailing. We should have won four or five nil. Um, you know, lots of putting it down to Spurs being poor, Harry Kane looking tired, but you know, you got to say we played that perfectly, and they didn't like our pressing. Um, so, you know, let's hope we can put Chelsea under a similar pressure. I thought Chelsea were terrible in the Community Shield game against Man City. I know they didn't have their strongest eleven. I think, you know, Hazard was missing there and one or two others. But, you know, that City side really did press high and get at them and they didn't like it. Um, obviously, that was before Kovacic joined as well. I think Fabregas started that game. And Fabregas played well, by the way, midweek. But um, I think there's no chance he'll play this one. So it's very tight to call. You know, if you're going to ask me what I take a draw here, it would keep us ahead of Chelsea. It would probably keep us, well, I mean, it would keep us top, um, you know, depending on what City do. If City win and that puts them level on points, we'd all be, um, we'd all have dropped points, but then we'd be on six, well, what would it be? We'd be on 19, wouldn't we? We'd be on 19. City, if they win, we'd be on 19. So, you know, is that a good place to be at this stage of the season, given their run of fixtures, Man City compared to ours? We've got to play them at Anfield in a couple of weeks, maybe. But because I said I'd take a draw at Tottenham and I got a win, um, I'm not going to underestimate Liverpool here. And because we lost midweek, I want to get my revenge on Chelsea. You know, we never want to lose to them. So, yeah, I'm going to say we are going to win this game. And I don't just say that because I want to come across as confident. I am genuinely confident that we're going to do a job. Um, defensively, we're absolutely sound at the moment. Um, you know, Alisson's got his mistake out of the way. I'm sure Chelsea are going to press. Uh, I'm sure Eden Hazard's going to give our defenders all sorts of things to worry about. Of course, he's the best player in the league at the moment. I think on form uh, this season, he is the absolute best. Um, but, you know, as long as we're equipped to deal with that, and I think the way to deal with that is to play Henderson and Wijnaldum. Um, you know, not Naby Keita. I think Keita is a good substitution to bring on if the game's level. 
But yeah, I think Wijnaldum and Henderson sitting deep, watching those runs, but still having the ability, particularly Wijnaldum, to drive forward. His, his, the way he uses his body, I know I say it a lot, but it's such clever movement. Um, and he has, got, he has got pace, he has got strength. He can turn away from a player. The way he turned away from uh, Bernat for PSG to win that penalty was very clever. That is just vintage Wijnaldum. This season he's been terrific at that. So he'll, he'll have had a full week's rest in him. Um, so looking forward to seeing him play. And James Milner, you know, another man who's not afraid to go in defensively and do his job. Um, and, you know, Klopp's been very impressed with Mo Salah defensively this season. Sadio Mane likewise. So, you know, it, it does really become a 4-5-1 when we're not, you know, when we're not in possession. And then as soon as we are in possession, the full-backs bomb on. It's almost like a 3 you know, a 3-4-3 three, a three, three at times. You know, the, one of the full-backs will bomb on, the other will sit in. So, yeah, we're very fluid and... Yeah, there's no reason to believe we cannot go there and do a job. I'm sure Chelsea will be feeling similarly confident themselves, particularly coming off that win at Anfield. But yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, the, the defeat in midweek hasn't um, disheartened me too much. And I'm picking us to go to Stamford Bridge and win by the same scoreline that we won there two seasons ago, two goals to one, um, the same scoreline that we beat Spurs by. And, you know, the Reds are going to go marching on, I think. You know, after that, it's Man City in the league. And then, then we'll see what we're really made of. There's a chance for us to go five points clear of... Of, uh, of both sides then so I mean you know if we can just pull off these two wins then suddenly we're almost favourites for the title you know so the Reds will know that you know we've got Napoli midweek after that but I don't think that'll be a concern the fact that we've beaten PSG in the Champions League means you can you know you don't have to have as much of an eye on the next game in the Champions League as you would I know Klopp always takes each game as it comes but you don't have to quite do that and I was thinking that before Firmino scored against PSG actually um I was thinking about the later games, you know, game week five and six in Champions League where we don't have a chance to rest players because we need to win. But even the second, third and fourth games, when you've got difficult games before and after them, like we do, uh, with Napoli being sandwiched in between Chelsea and City, um, is very positive. So fully focused on Chelsea away. I'm fully confident we can go there and win. 2 ones my prediction. Goal scorers, I'm going to go for James Milner. And I'm going to go for Gini Vinaldum to score uh, in an away game again. That's my prediction. Leave yours in the comments below. Leave any thoughts on the game just gone, the game that's coming, the starting 11 in the comments below. Now, I said on, uh, was it last night, that I'm not going to do any vlogging anymore. And it didn't go down too well. Um, people like my, it turns out you guys like my just kind of journeys to the ground. Um, I, I said I'm not going to record in the ground too much anymore because it, you know, um, just kind of takes away from the fun of it, having to kind of worry about that. But, you know, journey to the ground, reaction to team lineups, you know, and then coming out of the ground and getting home and just giving my overall thoughts. I'll, I'll make it more of an interesting vlog, um, you know, rather than just me sitting here when I get home and talking about it. So don't worry about that. That'll be coming back on Saturday evening. Um, have a great time. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel if you're new and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. It's Ben Might Say on all of those platforms. And I'll see you next time.